cancer. It kills over 7 million people around the globe every year. It's a deadly disease, very expensive to cure. But without full support from the United Nations or other relevant world bodies, it's me and my family facing it. No money, no drugs. Cancer killed reggae icon Bob Marley. Spartacus main actor Andy Whitfield, who succumbed to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. World acclaimed genius Steve Jobs, the Apple computer's founder. Closer to home, it killed Father Zimbabwe, Joshua Nkabo Gonyongolongkomo. Great revolutionary and father of democracy in Zimbabwe, Edgar Chubwe Tekere. The first female Republic Police Deputy Commissioner General, Barbara Mandija. Memorich Bakuri, the brave girl who battled it alone for 13 years. It can affect anyone. It can kill anyone. Cancer, the silent epidemic. But there are some who have resisted. Iconic figures who have found life on the other side of cancer. Lance Armstrong, the American racing cyclist who survived testicular cancer and went on to win the Tour de France a record seven consecutive times, a feat no one else has matched. And in Zimbabwe, we have our own. He was born on a farm compound. Dow life screened away from the prosperous world, a hostage to the vicious cycle of poverty. He grew up in a mining compound, and at 17 years of age, he would go underground as a miner to raise school fees. Then he became an accounts clerk at Kwekwe General Hospital. but the guitars called him home. He is smart. He is handsome. And the ladies love him. They call him Muroji Mukuru, Muchina Muombe, Igwe, Dewa, Samanyemba. Behold, Zimbabwe presents Tonga Igwe. Tongai is a trailblazer. Of his many awards, 2005 was his major highlight. He won two musical awards at the Zimbabwe Music Association Zima Silver Jubilee Awards for Naye, his most outstanding album. And together with Oliver Mutukuzi, who helped him set up his career, they stole the night. Then the city of Kwekwe honored him for putting their city on the world map, awarding him a certificate of merit. But then cancer struck. So Mandla Ndebele, Tongai's childhood friend and fellow musician, cannot hold back tears as he wonders why cancer chose his friend. Cancer Association of Zimbabwe knowledge manager Tafazwa Chigariro says that non-Hodgkin lymphoma is one of the cancers with a high prevalence in Zimbabwe. For all his fame, in a world deaf to cancer, Tongai suffered from late diagnosis.
At first, Tongai was happy it was cancer, not HIV, but later on, he had come to realize. Cancer is very expensive to cure. In a private hospital where Tongai is treated, doctor's fees for one chemo session costs 780 US dollars. Tongai has to pay 800 US dollars as hospital fees, $800 for laboratory tests, $160 for drugs, $200 for transport. One chemo session costs $2,740. CT scans cost $1,000 for the whole body and $500 for the head alone. Radiation costs $215. Blood transfusions, usually two pints, that cost $110 each. Dewa needs steroids and antibiotics, which costs around $50 per week. There are also social costs to cancer. Family life is disrupted. His wife, Mininthe, says that cancer has changed their family's life drastically. They can't do what they used to do as a family. Tongai is very disciplined when it comes to taking medication, but the chemotherapy sessions in Zimbabwe today make him even sicker. Three days after chemo, Tongai seriously falls ill. 
So, after undergoing 18 chemo sessions, he is not fully healed. And the latest cancer drug, rituximab, costs 20,000 US dollars. A ridiculous amount to most Zimbabweans. Uh, the only thing they would do, me and my doctors and everything, we would hope you would, this type of cancer not treat it much. It's only that much, just do the scene. Uh, the medication is actually, I want to show you like in America and Nana India. Well, it takes time to get to Zimbabwe. You see, because of the Banuti or Asma, my cold chain drugs. Transportation is you know, from organizing the second temperatures and stuff like that. So, you know, we know if you think we're going to South Africa, we're going to My conditions are actually going to transport from South Africa to here and a little bit. We are working on the plans now. The right people are in. Because the right people are not very much, but they are so expensive. You always patient you can't go there and, and buy. From the information that we gather, he commissioned me from the in any personality. No, for our own, but sir, but no, no, but 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 I feel if you were to get you yet you never know to the kids maybe you're not gonna come back to in 2009 the nurse in Tonga's life, Sister Mutandavari, discovered that she was suffering from cancer. Apparently, uh, I'm also a cancer patient, but I uh, So, as we know, when the pain comes, it's, it's the pain that you can't explain to the next person. So, maybe that's why I also understand it. The nurse and her patient have united against cancer and encourage each other. For Tongai, the show goes on. He keeps performing at live shows and releasing new albums. When Tongai has a live show, he first goes into hospital for a blood transfusion. Then he appears on stage a few hours later and he delivers a well choreographed act. <laughs> On comes Bailey, Monica, Sele, Chikasha to dance the cellar dance, which was popularized by Tongai. But what gives Tongai the resilience to keep performing?
But even after cancer, Tongai has faced other challenges. In May 2010, Tongai's first wife, Barbara Muchengeti, committed suicide. It left him devastated as he dearly loved her. When she left him for the UK at the turn of the millennium, Tongai wrote and sang Barbara a song, Mukati Merima. He says, come holding the light and the darkness because you are my light. And when she heard it, she came back from the UK. She was Tongai's nurse during his cancer battle and her death was too big a blow. Many times, Tongai has been pronounced dead. And after one such instance, young businessman and promoter Joseph Munyebu, Joe Promotions, took it upon himself to take Tongai to his fans. <coughs> after last year, I Tongai up, I was Tongai up, I think I got put sick later, I was Tongai up, and then that when he started to get better, I was going to Tongai, and I was going to get better, and I was going to get better, and I was going to get better. Tonga went to do to have a show, you know, booster. But when I was there, no one would pay. I know, but those those are the guys that are ten or fifteen. They have enough to pay. They are doing the cadets. But this first time, I'm going to pay for that. Even after being diagnosed with cancer, Tonga still wins awards. In 2008, Tonga won the Nama Most Outstanding Song with the song Wakanaka which encourages husbands to appreciate their wives, to compliment them, tell them that they are beautiful, even a thousand times. Tongai champions women's cause. His love songs try to paint the picture of what the man of today is. the poor people's musician, singing about economic hardships in Jiwa. He identifies with the lowest ranks of men, glorifying the wounds, touts, and the gold and diamond panels, Dinde Makorokoza, because they are trying to survive and are not beggars. And he's a bringer of hope. Things can change for the better. And Tongai, who champions the poor, wants more to be done for cancer patients in Zimbabwe. According to International Atomic Energy Agency, Zimbabwe sees 7,000 new cancer cases per year. Of these, only 1,500 access medication. Zimbabwe could possibly be sitting on over 10,000 cases per year because the 7,000 come and present cancer, not that they have been screened. But if cancer screening mechanisms are strengthened, this will lead to early diagnosis and comprehensive cancer treatment. Cancer of the cervix, Kaposi sarcoma, breast cancer, non-Hodgkin lymphoma are the leading cancers in Zimbabwe. And while HIV and AIDS are linked to most cancers, treatment is free for only AIDS-related ailments. Only two public hospitals, Parenya to a group of hospitals in Harare and Mpila Hospital in Blawayo can comprehensively treat cancer. 
Parenyatwa is the only public hospital that has a mammogram. In Africa, only Zimbabwe and South Africa can train oncologists. But brain drain is a menace. Only five pathologists remain in the country against a population of over 12 million. As a country, we must train and retain. We must equip and maintain. There is need to strengthen the healthcare system, decentralize cancer control mechanisms to provincial and district levels. But this is a challenge, as there is little donor funding for cancer in Zimbabwe, with only the government and the World Health Organization being involved. ATM, which is an automated teller machine, has a new meaning, AIDS, TB, and malaria. So there is no cash for cancer, diabetes, chronic cardiovascular illnesses, and corporates are still to take cancer seriously and include it in their workplace health promotion initiatives. Patterson Chimboza, Cheapest Promotions, has worked with Tongai since 2004. Tonga used Tipo's Promotions Musicians versus Soccer Legends match in February to launch his comeback after a long illness. As things seemed to be getting better, Tonga was diagnosed with a brain tumor. He had fits and his health deteriorated. He had a successful radiation on Thursday and the next day he was performing at the city sports bar in Harare. Tonga raised money to buy Rituximab. Having amassed $9,000, he was heartlessly duped of his $7,600 by a loan shark. Tongai had fits when waiting for that money. But now Tongai's relatives believe he has suffered enough. <laughs> Tongai has been recording songs that show his belief in God. The song, Kumbirai, has the Psalms verse, Jehovah is my shepherd, I shall not want. <laughs> Tongai has a message for cancer patients. Go to hospital, not profits, not traditional healers, not herbs. Use clinically tested drugs. They are the ones that can cure cancer.
And it did. Tongai could not play on September 30th, the Zim's finest show. His 22-year-old son, Peter Moyo, led the Otakataka Express on that night. Minister of Media, Information and Publicity, Comrade Webster Shamu, who is the patron for the Zimbabwe Union of Musicians, spearheaded a campaign to raise funds for Rituximab. Well wishes and friends such as Esau Mupfumi chipped in and the drug was secured. But Dewa had developed kidney problems and was not in a position to take the drug. The nation waited anxiously and Dewa was optimistic. I'm just waiting on my kidneys and he had to go for dialysis four hours a day for two weeks. And finally, he was able to take his first dose of rituximab. But on Saturday, 15 October 2011, the curtain came crashing down. Tongai Moyo lost his battle with cancer. It was all over the news as the funeral procession passed through Kadoma. Fans blocked the roads, demanding that the car drive around the city. Parade him here in Kadoma, they said. He gave us joy. He was our own. The following day in Kwekwe, they thronged Mbizo Stadium where he used to play. Over 15,000 people jammed the stadium to bid farewell to their hero. On Tuesday, 18 October 2011, multitudes descended on Sosombe for the burial. But was it dead? Put on guy. I put that in the I was in the house. 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 I was in the I was Minister Webster Shamu, his friend and businessman Esau Mufumi, Zim Papers Board Chairman Dr. Paul Chimeza, musicians Charles Charamba, Tongai Sungura rival Alec Macheso, Somandla Ndevele. And a host of others were at the funeral. Last Power Media Managing Director, Last Morerwa, drove from South Africa for the funeral. And Tongai's last charge to his friend and confidant, Pedro Piri, was, manage my band. Utakataka Express, Muchina Muombe, I'm gone, but the show must go on. 
his 22-year-old son, Peter Moyo, will take up the reins from his father. Even in death, Tongai won his ultimate battle. He got Zimbabwe talking about cancer. Educate Zimbabwe about cancer through me, Tongai said. And the show goes on. In our homes, in our workplaces, in our schools, the show goes on. <laughs>